let the new religion fool you, that's some zoned out shit. Hush little baby, adults are talking that grown mouth shit. Your ass is just too little, your skin is way too brittle. Sensitive Nassau gangsters probably kill me over Skittles. Welcome back to Who That and it's me, Timmy, and we're here with Tansy as seniors and here with the overly genius crew. We have Adria. Hi. And James, well, J Complex who Dizzy. That? Who that? Plenty names. So how y'all doing? Good. We're good, right? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm great. Part. I am actually great. And I'm not usually great. But Isn't I it a good fine. day? If James fine, is great, yeah. you're having a good day. I had a fantastic conversation with Adria. <laughs> it's great. So we could we could start this so many ways because I know you both of you very well. But let's start off the thing I said, overly genius. So Adria is wearing the insignia. So James, talk to us. What is overly genius? Overly genius. Trying to say what overly genius is. Um, I'm not even sure what to tell you. I, it's 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 uh, I guess in the most basic sense a group, but I'm not even fully sure how to say if the entire group is still together. And then uh, words are just so confining. Overly genius OG is just a, it's just a definition. You no know, humans try to define things, so it's just a definition of of myself as as egotistical as it may sound. But I think being human is is being egotistical. And I had some people that happened to share the the idea with me. Mm. It's not to say that I think I am genius, but it's just always being that, always at least desiring that different, that difference in mean, whatever we do. We happen to mostly be in music and arts, and that's what OG was. Plus, I mean, it just sounds dope. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you get a part of this this OG click? Well. <laughs> he actually reached out to me and wanted me to be a part of the team and of course like we go way back so like i mean from gamer days mm-hmm. you know, games, <laughs> play games, video games and be like on the porch like oh you know yeah yeah you remember that right i always remember <laughs> being on the porch yeah so it was just like okay well i'm into music you're into music let's be into music let's work on things <laughs> together, together yeah you know, let's okay. collaborate yeah to sense you on you um unlike most people you use your actual name as perform- when you're performing adria mm-hmm. it used to be adria janae mm-hmm. why did it change from janae to oh adria? my goodness um well there were a lot of comparisons mm-hmm. with janae aiko and i didn't want people to feel like Ooh, she biting that girl style, you know. <laughs> and both y'all are bright and sing, y'all yeah. y'all whisper sing and whisper sing. <laughs> yes, that's whisper, what we do. Whisper sing. So yeah, I didn't want any confusion there, but that is my actual name. Like, I you gotta help with God. No. Name. Well, God, sorry. I, I, I told you. That, I don't know. I understand why. I told you the last time your God given name. You correct me. Your parent given name. So I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Your parent given name was Adrian. Janine. Yep. And you, this boy over here, because he have James, <laughs> Jimmy. Gizzy, why J Complex? You know, yeah, like you said, like my old nickname, or at least my nickname from the family is, was Gizzy, and uh, that's a whole long story. But the point is, when I I actually want to hear the story. Though. I mean, I know it. I, know you know I think I do know it, but I think the so people to the want- cameras. Um, to anyone old enough or savvy enough to have watched the Gremlins, right? There was that one, or the, the first, the original Gremlin. Um, you know, that OG gremlin, right? <laughs> they nicknamed him Gizmo. And gremlins generally were in that fuzzy stage, had big eyes and everything. And when I was born, <clears throat> I came out, you know, straight out, eyes wide open, looking around the hospital room. And my eyes were so big, and my father said it reminded him of Gizmo. And from then, that family name kind of stuck. Um, kids heard about it when I was in high school time and changed it around to Gizzy. I know, funny enough, a funny thing I only realized, I might have mentioned it to me before, but I only realized in the last year or two, is, um, you know, I love my, how I like to think of conscious crap, and I can curse, conscious shit, right? Mm-hmm. And also, you know, my affinity for certain substances. And when I thought about it, I realized that when I was born, my eyes were open. So, uh, Jimmy was born in, in conscious. Enlightened. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. was wow. born conscious. Yeah. 
what happened with wow. my mom, unfortunately for her, all of the epidurals and all the drugs and everything, she was supposed to have the pain, um, went straight through her system and came to me. So the reason why I was born with my eyes open and all around, I was groggy. So I was born high and conscious. Mm. And I've, it makes and sense. It made a lot it, of sense, right? Like my life now was I understand. that way. <laughs> now every time when someone asks me why I just how he is, he was, was born and lightning moment for me. Yeah, that's when that came about. And when we used to work the <laughs> certain bar, volume music bar, you got the nickname Jimmy, like Jimmy Hendrix, also Jimmy Shadow James. And do you consider any parallels to yourself to the great Hendrix? Jimmy, even before working the volume music bar, the great late volume music bar, um, my family always called me Jimmy. And my, my, my dad's name was Gizmo, but my family generally always called me Jimmy. Uh, I think it's when a, a past girlfriend or something called me that it stuck at work. Uh, to Jimi Hendrix, reason I saw using the J.I.M.I. is because I mean, Jimi Hendrix is just the man. Mm. I mean, damn. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's Jimi Hendrix. Like, I love that comparison. And again, I don't. Though I love his music, I can't ever say like I'm any real true. I'm a fan, but I can't ever try and compete with any real true fan. Like, I know <laughs> everything, you know. But um, I respected the things that I, that I do know, I understand about him, and it's just a trill dude, you know, for all the wrong and negative reasons. <laughs> so he's a trill dude, and I love that. So yeah. Can you play any instruments? Hell no. <laughs> I, I think I think I remember a interview with Kendrick like several years ago, you know, during the the early phases of the buzz, where he said that Dre sat him down and told him that his he has to remember his voice is an instrument too. Mm. And so from that I found so because I used to want really want to play an instrument and tried a couple of times, piano and guitar. Um just never really had an affinity for it. But watching that interview I, I realized it, it gave me it gave me solace, you know, the fact that that is a part of the of the of the, of the song too. It's a part of the music too. Because even today, when they're not saying anything at all of relevance, just the fact that their voice is there is a sound that's a part of the song. So even though I'm not exactly a vocalist, I, I've accepted that my voice is an instrument. Like how we were in the drive here and all us were singing um, "Pick Up the Phone" by Young Thug, and they wasn't saying anything with sense. Yeah, "Pick Up the Phone" by Travis Scott. But not by sorry, young Travis Thug. Scott People and think Young I'm Thug. I'm a Young Thug fan. Like and, but, you, <laughs> but you were singing the lyrics and like all oh, us was harmonizing in the car, and none of us knew what we were saying, but we was harmonizing. That's an instrument. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in speaking of instruments, you actually know how to play the guitar, and you self taught. How how was that happen? I. I'm so in awe. <laughs> I honestly, I just I don't know. I I always thought it was such a. Um, a nice sound and so i saw one and i'm like oh parents parents i want one and they're like um are you gonna commit to this are you serious <laughs> so you don't even know how to play where are you gonna get lessons blah 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 and i would just pick it up put it down pick it up put it down and then eventually i would pluck the strings on like the individual frets and what was it called frets and this is before i knew that's what it was called <laughs> okay. i'm just like oh I'll hold this string down right here on this slot mm-hmm. and then hold another one down and if they sound good together then play them both at the same time and that was basically how i just learned just like that and today when when last did you actually pick up a guitar and just play it mm, probably last week but that wasn't it wasn't good it was i want you to know that's some past life shit too <laughs> when you can pick up an instrument you don't know how to play that's some past life shit right there <laughs> so how many, how many do you want um i have three right mm. now i i gave one away but um, that was like the tiny one. But mm. I have one. Do you still have the, the green, like green movie one? Or? Yeah, that's okay. that's the main one. Okay, that's that's yeah, the that's, that's the, the that's the OG. One. That's the original. Yeah, <laughs> I just like well, these, these OG things you see in throughout the conversation. That one isn't the original. No, the one with the rainbow flower that I put on it. Mm. That, that one is the original. And that's the one you gave away. No, I still have that. Oh, okay. It just it's just too like the the neck is so. That's what it's called. Big. I like, learned so much. It's called wide. neck. It's yeah. Called, okay. It's it's so I don't. Is it? Now I'm thinking it's maybe the fretboard. What do they call it? I don't know. I feel like it's a neck. neck. So I'll call it a neck. All right. But yeah, that one, that was too big. Like that, I can't space my fingers. I don't have the fingers for it though. Like some people, they have like wings and really, really (laughs) wide. Yes, it's so crazy. So I got like the electric (laughs) one and the the frets were like really close together. And Mm -hmm. so it was easier to play like that. But yeah. So growing up, when you saw you was probably two, three, four, five, six. Who was your inspiration that you and made you think you know, I could be this? Like I could sing in the mirror, and I actually could do this myself. Uh at that point, I honestly I just wanted to be a veterinarian. Oh, so you just <laughs> want to play a pet and thing. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I I hear my mom sing, and I thought mm, that's nice. 
but mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't think I ever wanted to like to go miss. into it right then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what well, what point did you say I am going to be Miss Adjudicate? Sorry. When it went no when it um <laughs> I would sing after school like with my friends waiting for my ride mm-hmm. to come pick me up. Then I left that school and my friend she's like oh i miss you i miss the days we used to sing and sit and whatever and messenger plus oh my god Those they made the, the sounds right <laughs> and she's like sing again sing again because i miss that this girl she <laughs> saved you? the thing yeah she <laughs> saved it and sent it around mm-hmm. and so people were, like hitting my brother up saying hey yeah, i didn't know your sister could sing I, that's all for true for true because it was chris brown song yo mm-hmm. and i was so embarrassed <laughs> but when people actually responded positively to it i was like okay maybe i could do like a youtube channel and i did the, and the, I le- thought, the legendary I thought nobody YouTube would channel. find me sugar bunny i thought please nobody talk, would find please tell people about the legendary Adria mm, youtube channel even do it it was i honestly i thought it was so secret you know but it's youtube like hundreds of millions, of, on millions of likes and views and don't even run out it was literally just me and my grammy like <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it's a little bit of envy there too when i said like when i first came across i was like oh sh- several thousand views, thousand, oh thousand views per yeah. man per- <laughs> she's being modest being modest Covering. honestly who, who was your favorite person to cover um vanessa carlton and Colby Calais. Mm. I, I really love their their style because mm-hmm. they're just like um I feel like that's that's really where we got into the acoustic indie type of sound mm-hmm. down here mm-hmm. when people really started to listen to it and like Y98 introduced everybody to what they love to call white people music <laughs> <laughs> down here everybody kind of you know oh that's a nice Five. Let's let's listen to this. So they took a liking to that. So I did get a lot of requests to cover those songs, and I'm like, hey, right up my alley, whisper music. So yeah. <laughs> what about you, James? So I don't know how old you was. Probably six, seven, eight. The first rap or not even it have to be out of R and B. Out of just an inspiration that hey, I want to do this. Just say hey, I want to do this. Gee, um, I guess technically it was Nelly. Mm-hmm. That was elementary school. Underlay, underlay. Mama, yeah, I don't know if it yeah. didn't make me so much say I wanted to do this, mm-hmm. but kind of, I looked at it as it was at least a possibility of something I had as a human being the <laughs> ability to do. Because Nelly was, Nelly. I mean, in comparison, Nelly is still straight gutter in comparison to me. Mm-hmm. But still, Nelly was the kind of a pretty, pretty. Nelly was like the previous Drake. You yeah, know? he was that and pretty boy in rap, and it made me feel like, okay, this is something I could potentially do. Because like my other music wasn't as available as it is now. Mm-hmm. So like the other comparison I had like available to me in life at the time was DMX. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of CDs in the house, I knew. <laughs> I knew I couldn't be that. <laughs> I thought like the X. So. <laughs> and I heard Nelly, I was like, oh, this is at least some potential there. Mm-hmm. But um, even that still wasn't that I really, really said I was. This is what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I can't. It's it, that very inkling of Big Bang of what I said. I'm not sure what that was. But when it started, um, Chase, of course, you know, Chase homie used to be Thriller. I, yeah. Um, said to me, "Yo, if you really want to do this, it's something I just need to check out." And on the list he gave me, the only one I really paid attention to was Lupe Fiasco, Food and Liquor. And Food and Liquor, and I think Sunshine was track three. Mm-hmm. I heard Sunshine, and it was a love song, too, which is still where I was, because, again, like I said, kind of that soft and Nelly side. Mm-hmm. I heard Sunshine, and I heard just the way he spoke. And I was raised, I was raised, you know, with the with the importance on speaking, writing, and everything. So when I learned that what rap could be, you mm-hmm. know, metaphor, simile, allegory, figurative speaking, I sat there like, you can do that? It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful. And it was from then that I said that, okay, I, I, I don't even know why I, th- I thought I really wanted to do it, but it was just so beautiful. I couldn't help it. Well, I just said she used to be singing after school in school, but you actually used to rap the fun day inside. <sighs> I don't know. I rap to a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> to a fun day inside. It's funny. I have no idea what pushed me to keep wanting to do music because coming from a more obscure social standpoint in mm-hmm. my life, music didn't help that at all. Like... Like where they push all your stuff around, I tried to push my stuff <laughs> around, and the stuff was terrible. Mm-hmm. I, I I just don't know what driving force is telling James James hey, keep doing <laughs> hey, just it because keep doing I it. kept getting back, I kept getting the exact opposite, like, the, trash. like trash. yeah, like oh the negative. God. 
something kept saying go on even now but even now we even if i say there's any negative thing that comes any negative feedback i get it's more of a it's more it it, it adds to my determination now but that's that's now i have no idea how i kept going back then but right. Sorry, so Roger, just fast forward to after you really fast forward, but from those days of Emerson Messenger, how did you get in the actual studio? Because you used to be in the studio long before you actually started recording your own songs. Um, hmm. like first studio experience, mm, like that one, yeah. First studio experience <laughs> was a closet, okay, <laughs> it was a closet, a literal closet. Um, <laughs> yeah, with a Barbie towel to block out the sound <laughs> and everything that was. Soldier Shadi and Sniper and they they just played well Sniper played baseball with my brother so he was like if your sister's serious about music like we bring it through bring it through the stool right bring and it was a stew. rap you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it was a rap so I started rapping and then studio studio though like they just hit me up on YouTube and was like okay we want to work on some stuff with you if you're serious mm-hmm. so yeah what was the first song you ever recorded you can't ever forget your first was it, it what never, was it called? I honestly don't know what it's <laughs> called, but it was that rap. Like I, I recorded, I didn't just tell me why these guys keep trying me. I was twelve trying to spit some game, but that's how liars be. No, pause, pause, pause. Look out, James. Look out. Uh, what about you? The first song you ever recorded? I definitely forget that. Uh, I have no idea. I to this day, to this day, as a friend. Tariq Albury, mm-hmm. who has cataloged, I think, everything that in my circle of friends we've recorded in music for future blackmail. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. And he, he reminds us every once in a while. And he sends stuff or, or, or mentions things that I have no recollection of ever <laughs> recording at all. Wow. But I think the earliest thing I can remember like, recording, oh, man, geez, oh, just hearing it in my mind is embarrassing to me. But I remember doing uh, in those jeans cover for some reason. Wow! Yeah, wow. I know, right? You see that coming? I know, right? <laughs> That's kind there of was uh, also I can't remember which, which one was first. There was also um, what was that Yin Yang Twin song? Hush, Hush, Hush the yeah. Whisper song. Yeah. I did a cover of that too. Oh, <laughs> this is what I'm saying, right? I was always obscure for some reason, and the, the songs were weren't great. But just my mindset was always in obscurity back then. Mm. That's those are the weirdest things to pick. Um, I can't remember the exact first one was, but it was some weird stuff like that that I never want to hear again, and that I know is sitting there. <laughs> if I ever should cross him, I know it's sitting there. <laughs> so, you got your first song at twelve. When did you say, "Okay, I'm serious. I'm actually going to record studio music, get it mixed, the master cover art, music videos"? When did you start to form uh, the other artists? Fifteen. And now that you, what, did you, what steps did you take to, to become that? Honestly, I, I'm the worst at promoting my stuff. I, I have to say it. Like I have to be real with myself. I, I just, I know what I'm supposed to do. You know what I <laughs> you mean? You still want to do it? But I just, oh, I do. I want it so bad. But then it's like if you look at what I'm doing, you just be like, what are you doing? You're supposed to do this, and I don't. But I. I took it seriously when I was graduating um, because that was, like I said, when I had like that second studio experience and that was when I actually had signed the contract and everything and was going to a studio that didn't involve Barbie towels, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but we we did songs and I could actually hear the finished product. Mm -hmm. So it was like that was what motivated me because i was like oh i can't wait to do this again and they were allowing me to write my own stuff Mm -hmm. and hearing the finished product is just so good you know and you want to keep going and keep going and then you do whatever it is to better yourself Mm -hmm. and um honestly when i was doing the project it started out as just okay i just want to do this one song and which project was this amaretto okay baby. oh so you started amaretto from 50 no 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 oh i was um, scared i was like whoa <laughs> no 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 this is no, detox no. This, is the first, <laughs> <laughs> this is the first official one i think <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous okay no i i honestly i didn't even plan for that to really be a project mm-hmm. but it was like okay finished project okay this 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 is what we're looking at doing now because i did like three and they sounded like they could be a collection mm-hmm. so let's do so some you, more so your song sounded like a like so you could do like a whole project of it right yes yeah. he's on the track just yeah okay yeah. and amaretto was amazing too thank you what was the first song was it g-a-n 
on the that, that, that you recorded for it. The first song you ever recorded for Amber though. The first one I heard was the first one I heard was, was, was yeah. Royalty was the first one I heard before it was like done. I feel like the first one I did was Breakdown. Eh? Really? Breakdown was I feel like yeah, like we started working on that one first. Mm. I feel like it well, it is one, it's one, not the flex on people, but that song was like a radio for like oh, a year. Jesus. It was a radio for like a year, so it's your most successful. Super Supervalue with like. It's your most what? successful song. Really? So Super Value was like. <laughs> oh yeah, I was inside the bank and they explained it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yes, it was on the radio for like a year and a half. So I understand why you put a lot of effort in it. So you said you worked on it. Like how, because f- I'm already came out 2014. So what, around what time you said you were recorded Breakdown? 2012. 11, no, 13. No, you know, 2013. Yeah, 13. 2013. And it's I usually, hate that one. It's usually ones you work, you have, you work on first. Like, it's a sidetrack. Well, let me do a sidetrack. I know you two probably enjoyed Solange's album if you listen to it. Mm-hmm. Cranes in the Sky, which is like the best song on the album, was recorded in 2008. Yeah. So that, was, that song is eight years old. Mm-hmm. So just like Breakdown, it was recorded first. And it's the, you have a whole video for it. It was in the radio forever. <laughs> so... Yeah, and I hate that song the most. Like that's the one I hated. <laughs> that's like, always happens. Oh my god, I hated it. I, I honestly, I wanted it to be one verse, and that's it. And they were like, "No, boy, to the fight, what you like?" Because you it's, know, it's people, I'm joking, right? Mm-hmm. People already rowing me seeing you know songs too short. Just too boy, short. boy, I, 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 I used to listen to this it's project. Him. Like, what, what are the rest of the project? What are the rest of the songs? I like, like one, short one verse. Like, I like short songs. I like them. Me too. But that's like, one more. That's the point. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, don't want you to understand. Well, well, it's been two years. Sorry. It's Sorry. okay. I it's okay. Say, I can't it's honestly either. okay. I, <laughs> I, I worked on songs like right after, mm-hmm. um, doing the project, and they are still just sitting in the computer catching dust. <laughs> and I wanna, I just wanna put them out, but you know, I can't just do that. Why? I, I can't do that. I. I'd be in trouble if I do that. Oh, <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you legit over there? Sorry. Let me talk to no. the verse. Let's talk to the people who broke broken in the gym. Oh my right? god, I am not. Tell me what you're really about. Tell me, is it worth your time? Is this what you're looking for? Is this what you had in mind? We can let this go.